the Minister of Aboriginal Relations, the Honourable Mr. Frank Oberly. Good morning, Frank. Good morning. How are you this morning? I am great. How are you? Thank you for joining me today. It's an honour. You bet. The honour is mine. Initially, we wanted to have you in for National Aboriginal Day. Now, June, of course, is Aboriginal Month. We are celebrating our culture all month long. Now, uh, we had a couple of questions uh, to ask you this morning. Uh, what the government's involvement with National Aboriginal Day was? Well, we've uh, we've uh, held and sponsored events across the province. There were, uh, uh, I'm not even sure how many, 30, uh, probably more than 30 events across the province. Uh, and uh, we, we held our own celebration, plus we joined in with the, the federal government celebration. Uh, I very unfortunately was unable to attend events this year. I had a, a, a funeral for a, actually an Aboriginal leader in the, uh, on the Thursday, on the provincial day, and I went down to the Blood Tribe to look at some of the flooding on the Friday there, so uh, I, I couldn't participate, but uh, uh, there were events across the province. Now, I was uh, looking at your bio, and it amazes me how you found time to be a part of so many organizations in Canada. Well, <laughs> it's kind of you to say. I, uh, um, I firmly believe that one should uh, give back to the, uh, the community according to their talent, and, and uh, this is what I think mine is, so I, I uh, help wherever I can. Because like, you were elected uh, third term as a member of the Legislative Assembly for Alberta for the constitu uh, constituency of Peace River. Uh, back in 2012, uh, and you're also appointed as Minister of Aboriginal Relations on December of last year, and uh, you also hold Deputy House Leader. Yeah. Amazing. Well, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's an interesting job, absolutely, <laughs> and I, I really do love this portfolio. Now, the importance of the government and the relations with the Aboriginal people and the work that uh, we had done to contribute to Alberta, how is the government taking steps to help our Aboriginal people uh, contribute to society. Well, we, and, and you're right. That's an, an extremely important. Alberta uh, succeeds if our Aboriginal people succeed and, and partake in this uh, the economic boom that we're we're feeling here. And um, so the the government's involved in in a whole bunch of ways. We're we're uh, redoing our consultation system so that we make sure that uh, consultation on projects is is. Uh, meaningful and adequate. Um, we're uh, revamping our education system so that we can ensure that Aboriginal students have the same outcomes as other students. We've uh, started an economic opportunities initiative which will foster uh, Aboriginal businesses across this province and help them uh, partake uh, in, in the economy. So uh, participating in a number of fronts. Mr. Oberly, we have our news, uh, beautiful news lady, Robin Wilson, joining with me this morning. Hello. Good after good morning, Mr. Oberly. Good morning, Robin. <laughs> How are you? Very well, thank good. you. Um, good. I'm going to come at you with a couple of uh, questions, um, a little bit more hard-hitting, I think. Um, I grew up in northern Alberta, and I know a lot of issues. My mom was actually mayor up there for three terms in Fairview. I don't know if you're familiar with the town of Fairview. I am, yeah. Yes. Um, I just wanted to ask you, just because of, obviously, the Northern Gateway Pipeline just being approved recently, um, a lot of people are saying this will be the demise of the PC government. Um, a lot of things to do with human rights issues as far as Aboriginal people. Um, I mean, what's your take on this? Uh, uh, do you think that this can be done properly? I know living in a, in a small town and a lot of focus being oil and gas, a lot of good intentions, but a lot of times bad things happen. So how do you see this project and what do you see for the future? Well, the federal government did approve it. Uh, um in, in the sense of gateway, approval is probably a strong word in that uh, uh, it's one step that the, the project has to go through. But there are still 209 conditions to meet, uh, and we have to satisfy the, the uh, B.C. government. And the, uh, uh, the proponents have to work with the First Nations on the route across there. And until all those things are done, the pipeline won't proceed. So we have uh, – there's a long ways to go yet. But um, the, the, the project, the ability for Alberta to get its raw resources to market uh, is, is critical to Albertans, uh, all Albertans, including Aboriginal people in the north that are employed by and benefit from the oil and gas industry. Uh, it has to be done right. It has to be done in, in an environmentally sound way and in a way that uh, 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 treats the First Nations as, as 
proper stakeholders and partners. That's right. And for our listening area, we have the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation there. I mean, a, a lot of it, they want to be part of the process, but they also want to be part of, you know, the uh, the process that makes it, I mean, obviously brings in the money and, and resources for them as well, right? They, like you said, it benefits all sides as long as it's done responsibly. I agree with that. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Um, one more thing I wanted to ask you about was just, I mean, obviously there was a lot of things to do with missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Um, all the numbers were released. Uh, 206 murders between 1980 and 2012 were here in Alberta. Um, numbers obviously higher in the western provinces, and Alberta was higher than Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and B.C. What, what do you think about uh, local, um, you know, policing forces and things like that that, that are being done to uh, get after this problem? Well, Robin, I can say, first of all, it's a very troubling family, it's a, you know, troubling issue, and my, my heart goes out to the families that, that have suffered a loss. It, it, it's an unimaginable thing to have happen in your family, and my heart uh, truly does go out. Um, I think... You know, as a, as an observer, and that's all I can be, it appears that you know the uh, uh, our police take such issues seriously and 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 investigate them. But nonetheless, uh, we have this uh, very large uh, population of murdered and missing women, and and Alberta has expressed very clearly on a number of occasions that we'd like to get to the bottom of it. What, what really are the root causes here, and uh, are we are we actually thoroughly investigating and and following all leads and um, so we have we have joined in the other provinces, and we've uh, called for the federal government. We support an inquiry on the national level. So, um, and we'll continue to do that because we think it's an important issue and that one that we have to put behind us. That's good to hear for sure. And like I said, Edmonton being the second highest Aboriginal population of all cities next to Winnipeg. So, I mean, being uh, the minister, it's something. Uh, it's something that. Yeah, obviously we want to bridge gaps, right? We want to bridge gaps and bring everybody together as a community and to, as a common people, you know, and bridge those gaps. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'll hand you back to Lady Angela, but uh, it was an honor speaking with you, and thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you very much, Robin. Hi, Frank. Thank you again for joining us on the morning show today. Not at all. My pleasure. Uh, take care, be well, and uh, stay unique. Yeah, <laughs> thank Thanks. you. Bye now. Bye bye.